And thank you so much for joining us for CBN News. Watch I'm from Graham. Ahead today, a major earthquake hits parts of Turkey and Syria, killing thousands. We have de developments. Plus, it's a remarkable story of bravery and survival in the Great Dismal Swamp. The amazing part about the escaped slaves living here in the swamp is that the conditions living in here were better for them than being enslaved. See more on how black Americans endured the swamp all in an effort to escape slavery. Then later, Super Bowl 57 is around the corner and new commercials will premiere this year with messages about Jesus. We'll give you a look at the He Gets Us campaign. All these stories and more coming up next from the CBN Newsroom. This is CBN News Watch. We begin this half hour with a deadly 7.8 earthquake rocking southern Turkey and northern Syria early Monday morning. As Chris Mitchell reports, the death toll stands at more than 1,300, but that is expected to rise dramatically. Hundreds of buildings in the quake zone collapsed in cities across the border region like this one. And scenes like this showed the devastation that hit the area. After the quake, teams of rescue workers and residents rushed frantically to find those trapped in the rubble. And Turkey mobilized its rescue services. A devastating earthquake. All our governors are on duty now. Security forces, Turkish armed forces, disaster and emergency management teams, Red Crescent teams, and search and rescue teams from many points of Turkey. Turkey sits on top of major fault lines and is frequently shaken by earthquakes. The quake also smashed regions in northern Syria Areas controlled by forces fighting the Syrian government and filled with four million people displaced by the country's civil war. Many of them live in poor conditions with little health care. Rescue workers said hospitals were filled and the Syrian civil defense said Syria was in a state of catastrophe with entire neighborhoods leveled. More than 40 nations pledged help at the request of Turkey. Israeli Prime Minister Netanyahu said they would immediately provide medical and search and rescue teams, some of the best in the world. Israel's Magen search and rescue team will leave today to the quake region. The team uses specialized equipment and techniques to search for survivors. The epicenter was 20 miles from the Turkish city of Gaziantep and was felt as far away as central Israel and Cairo. At least 30 aftershocks continued to hit the region, with the strongest one measuring 7.5. Following the widespread devastation of the massive quake, search and rescue operations are likely to go on for many more days, followed by a tragic and long recovery. Chris Mitchell, CBN News, Jerusalem. China is accusing the United States of indiscriminate use of force after shooting down a suspected Chinese balloon off the Carolina coast over the weekend. Now, the Pentagon says there have been previous incursions of Chinese balloons over U.S. territory. Aldil Hurd is on this story. China today accused the United States of indiscriminate use of force after a U.S. military jet shot down a suspected Chinese spy balloon Saturday. Critics are asking what took the White House and the Pentagon so long to do it. And they argue the U.S. shot down the balloon only after it had already flown over sensitive military sites across North America. A single F-22 fired an air-to-air -air missile roughly six nautical miles off the South Carolina coast, about 60,000 feet in the air. Break one. Flash one. That is a key kill. We have eyes on the balloon falling. Joe Biden claims he ordered U.S. officials to shoot down the suspected spy balloon earlier this week and that national security leaders decided the best time for the operation was when it got over water. I told them to shoot it down. On oh, Wednesday. On Wednesday. But the recommendation They said to me, let's wait till the safest place to do it. China insisted the flyover was an accident involving what it called a civilian unmanned airship. The Pentagon now says it's happened before at least three times, including during the Trump administration, a claim refuted by former President Trump and his White House defense and intelligence officials. A senior Biden administration official later told Fox News that information suggesting Chinese spy balloons crossed the U.S. under the Trump administration was discovered after Trump left office. Officials also say a Chinese spy balloon crashed into the Pacific off the coast of Hawaii four months ago 
And the Chinese surveillance balloons have also flown over Texas, Florida, and Guam. Lawmakers from both parties were left wondering why the Pentagon didn't shoot this balloon down sooner. I'm grateful that the military took decisive action when they did and how they did, uh, but we obviously have issues here. I can assure you that if we fly a balloon over China, they're going to shoot it down, and probably a lot sooner than we did. They knew the Senator US Marco government Rubio government believes China was sending a message. And the message they were trying to send is uh, what they believe internally, and that is that the United States is a once great superpower that's hollowed out, that's in decline. China is playing down the cancellation of a visit by U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken after the balloon incident, claiming neither side had formally announced a meeting. China warns that it retains the right to respond further. It also fired its national weather chief just after the balloon was revealed to be over U.S. territory. Dale Hurd, CBN News. The weaponization of government. It's a new subcommittee in the House led by Congressman Jim Jordan. Its purpose is to protect the First Amendment rights of conservative Americans at risk under the Biden administration. The Department of Justice, the FBI, and other agencies are in crosshairs of this new committee. CBN Capitol Hill co correspondent Matt Galka spoke with the chairman to learn more. House Speaker Kevin McCarthy named 12 Republicans to this subcommittee, established in part thanks to the negotiations that helped land him the Speaker's gavel. I spoke with the incoming committee chairman, Ohio Republican Jim Jordan, on what they hope to accomplish. If you think about in the last couple years, every right we enjoy as Americans under the First Amendment uh, has been attacked. Your right to practice your faith, your right to assemble, your right to petition the government, uh, freedom of press, freedom of speech. Jordan sees the new panel focusing on the Justice Department, FBI, and other agencies he believes have gone after conservative Americans under the Biden administration. The committee will have wide-ranging authority. Jordan lists the treatment of parents by school boards, social media censorship, and investigations into former President Donald Trump as likely issues on the docket. We don't want a political justice department because you, if you have a political justice department, this great country, the greatest country ever, is, it's, America is not America if you have a justice department that's political. And that's, that's scary and so many Americans now think it is. And you've seen the different treatment of Trump versus how Clinton and, and Biden are treated. You, you see it time and time again. To Democrats, the committee is an opportunity for Republicans to air grievances, partly because of how the Democrat-led January 6th committee carried out its investigation into Trump's role in the post-election riot. It's my expectation that we will be actively involved in pushing back against any efforts to obstruct justice through the weaponization subcommittee or to protect insurrectionists through the weaponization of government subcommittee. How do you avoid, I guess, in the eyes of a voter, uh, this not just being a GOP revenge tour and rather actually getting substantial work done? They made it personal. We're making it about the American people. We think there should be equal justice, equal treatment under the law. We think that's a hallmark of our system. Um, we think you should not not favor one political persuasion over the other. We think that that you uh, you, you know when when you have pro life uh, activists uh, exercising their constitutional right, uh, they should be given the same treatment as um, as as anyone on on the left. Uh, but we don't see that. Democrats are expected to seat nine members to the Republicans' twelve. House Minority Leader Jeffrey said those members should be named soon. Matt Gelka, CBN News. Coming up, poisonous snakes, biting insects, flies, and thick briars. The dismal swamp was once a refuge for 50,000 runaway slaves. See the footprints of those runaways left behind. Stay with us. For this Black History Month, we have a remarkable story of bravery and survival from an unlikely place, the Great Dismal Swamp. Generations ago, it served as a sanctuary for black Americans who were desperate to escape the bonds of slavery. Shelley Naren shows us what these slaves endured for the sake of freedom. The Great Dismal Swamp once covered nearly a million acres between northeastern North Carolina and southeastern Virginia. Between 1620 and around the time of the Civil War, it served as a thriving refuge for runaway slaves who chose to build their lives here in freedom 
no matter the conditions. You have uh, venomous snakes biting in insects and flies, um, thick cover of green briars. A great place is a refuge for wildlife, not as much probably a great place refuge for people. As many as 50,000 runaway slaves called maroons, an indigenous term, settled here on small rises of land known as Mesic Islands. Chris Lowy manages the Swamp's National Wildlife Refuge in Suffolk, Virginia. The amazing part about the escaped slaves living here in the swamp is that the conditions living in here were better for them than being enslaved. And that is, uh, yeah, that is a difficult concept to understand today. They established hidden communities in these heavily treed wetlands, building cabins and possibly farming small plots of land. Researchers believe the former slaves fed their families by hunting deer, wild turkey, and other game, skills they may have learned from Native Americans who also sought shelter here. The runaways went to great lengths to keep their settlements secret due to fear of being captured by slave owners. Dr. Dan Sayers, an archaeologist at American University, has studied the Maroon Islands for more than 10 years. What I'm finding out there in the middle of the swamp is these big old cabin footprints and a fire pit and all this stuff that shows, uh, you know, that this is a really active landscape. And most, not to say all, most of the material culture or artifacts um, is, is stone. And it's in, in equally abundant is burnt sand and clay. Sayers realized he was on to a significant discovery. It'd be little pieces of clear glass, it'd be a couple white clay tobacco pipe fragments, uh, some iron or metal fragments or little pieces, oh, a smattering of nails, some lead shot, a couple gun flint chips. It was enough stuff. Um, that I would artifacts. I was able to definitely feel and definitely know that this was of historic period. As a direct descendant of a slave who helped to build the Great Dismal Swamp, Eric Shepard shares a personal connection to this history. The story of the enslaved people that uh, escaped the plantations and went and lived in the swamp um, was really, uh, I guess, first uh, introduced to me. Yeah. Uh, in the in the slave narrative of, of my ancestor Moses Grandy, where he was employed as a, a boatman or waterman. Grandy traveled the swamp's canal and learned to navigate boats as logging operations and trade expanded at the site. He and other slaves dug the canal in several ditches by hand. As the swamp is today, yes, slave labor, um, those people have a permanent um, mark on the swamp as it is today. After arranging to buy his freedom, Grandy dictated his story, sharing about life as a slave and working in the swamp, never mentioning his interactions with escaped slaves living deep in the swamp. He had to still uh, be mindful of when he shared his story, uh, that it, it was you had to protect the people. It was a certain amount of secrecy. While many made the swamp their home, others saw it as just a stop on their journey north as part of the Underground Railroad. The Dismal Swamp was a refuge. It was a, a haven for the Underground Railroad activity. But can you imagine down in Louisiana, if you get to the Dismal Swamp, you're almost home free. In 2004, the refuge was designated an important landmark on the National Underground Railroad Network to Freedom. Freedom Maroons in the swamp preferred to living in captivity. On the one hand, it tells us uh, just how horrible slavery was, right? And really, let's not forget the racism and the, and the white supremacy part of that. When slavery ended in 1863, residents were free to leave the shadows of the swamp, moving to surrounding communities a time Shepard compares to the biblical account of Israel's deliverance from bondage. How did God deliver them out? Who can't explain it? It's only one explanation. The same God yesterday, today, and forever. Charlene Aaron, CBN News. Still ahead, spreading the gospel during this year's Super Bowl. One campaign is making it happen in a big way. Find out more next.
As we know, millions upon millions tune into the Super Bowl every year. For many, commercials are the main draw. And this year, several ads will feature messages about Jesus. In a campaign that's also been seen on billboards, the message is, Jesus gets us. Chris Broussard joins us now with more on the Get He Gets Us campaign. So, Chris, tell us about the He Gets Us campaign. Well, the He Gets Us campaign uh, really is, it does two things. One, it's kind of a rebranding of Jesus Christ in America. There are a lot of misconceptions about Christ uh, here in America. <clears throat> um, people associating him with various political views and uh, various groups of people associating him with elitism and, and negative things in our country's past. And he gets us his rebranding that, uh, showing that Jesus is for all people of all races, ethnicities, uh, of all socioeconomic statuses. Uh, so that's one thing it's doing, but also it's kind of showing in our polarized society how, um, you know, people are either getting angry uh, with the other side, or they're avoiding the other side altogether. And we're showing through Jesus, there's a third way, and that is to respect one another and to love other people with various views, different from yourself. Jesus obviously told us, taught us to love our enemies. Um, and so we want to just show that confounding love of Jesus Christ to America and show that his example and his teachings and his life really uh, hold uh, the answers to our modern day challenges that we're, we're facing individually and as a society. Mm -hmm. Now, you're running two commercials during the Super Bowl. What can you tell us about them? Yeah, well, one will be a 30 second piece. Uh, the other is 60 seconds. And as you said earlier, you, you know how important and impactful these commercials are during the Super Bowl. It's a great chance to reach um, a huge swath of Americans, many of whom um, may never go to church, or at least up to this point would never go to church, uh, many of whom may have a false or negative view of Jesus or Christianity. And so it's a great opportunity, as I said earlier, to just show uh, the love that Christ has for all people. And uh, I think it'll be incredibly powerful during the Super Bowl. Do you have a specific hope for those who are seeing the ads? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, number one, that they get a true, more biblical sense of who Jesus was, uh, one that is more biblically and historically accurate. Uh, and, uh, of course, ultimately, you will want people to find saving faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, but also just to take the lessons, the, the brief, quick lessons that are shared in the commercials and apply that to your daily life and how you treat other people, even those who have differing views than yourself. Chris Broussard with the He Gets Us campaign. Thank you so much for your time. You're welcome. Get the top political news and analysis from Washington on Faith Nation, tonight at 6 Eastern, only on the CBN News Channel. A Chicago man is finally home thanks to the generous donations of more than 400 strangers. 77-year-old Robert Pakula had been living without a stable home since November. But for the past two weeks, he spent his days walking the streets of Chicago, finding meals at area soup kitchens and spending the night at O'Hare International Airport. That is until a volunteer at the soup kitchen took notice, starting a GoFundMe campaign that quickly raised more than $20,000. That's enough for Pakula to rent an apartment. He said he, even though he doesn't know the Good Samaritans who donated, he does feel close to them. All the uh, people that have donated to me, they're, they're almost like a family, almost. Yeah. They're pretty close to it. They helped me a lot. 
Time now for your Monday motivation, and today I want to leave you with this message, even reminiscent of the story you just saw. God is calling on you and me to bring his kingdom to earth. Thy kingdom done, come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. It's the Lord's prayer, and we must position ourselves to make it possible. May his will be done through you and me wherever we are. The boardroom, the schoolhouse, the church, your home, his kingdom, his will on earth as it is in heaven. That is going to do it for this edition of CBN News Watch. I remind you, you can always find more of our programs on the CBN News Channel at any time. You can also find them online. That is CBNNews.com. We would love to know what you think about the stories you've seen here today or any day. You can email us. That address is right there at the bottom of your screen. It's newswatch at CBN.com. And of course, you can always reach out and touch us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. We certainly would love to hear from you. I encourage you to make today a marvelous Monday and be sure to have yourself a wonderful rest of the week on purpose and in purpose. Look forward to seeing you right back here, same time tomorrow. Goodbye and God bless.